I was excited to come up to Washington State to hunt California quail. I am absolutely a big game hunter. While field testing their hunting clothing line for women, <laughs> Pam, a deadly rifle shot, has hunted big game around the world. Now she's eager to try shotgunning. Done a whole lot of bird hunting, but I was that was I was even more excited because I knew I'd learn a lot, and it was just a completely different experience. Wildlife biologist Del Peterson imports and trains versatile yeah. German longhairs and hunts the Yakima area regularly. We have one spot we're going to go that uh, has not been hunted uh, at all this year, so uh, or at least lightly hunted, uh, but for the last month it's not been hunted at all. So. That should be an excellent place. There should be an abundance of birds. Spomber is chomping at the bit to test his young English setter on Peterson's feathered bonanza. I've always wanted to explore some of this country, but I've never really had to because I live in similar terrain in Idaho. But Dell has got some great country, some great dogs. Moni is a classic chocolate brown German longhair famous for retrieving. Cheyenne is Ron's English setter, infamous for pointing many birds and rarely fetching any. Uh, generally the plan is we'll, we'll work this carrageena and, and uh, these little junipers down and push the quail out to the south and southeast. Get so, them into the open grass? Get them into the open grass okay. and hopefully along that sagebrush line up there too. All right, let's go find some birds. I want to see this dog work. Oh yeah. Tracks all over here. Dogs are being real cautious here, sniffing them out, tracking them. Good shot. All right. Go fetch it there, Moni. We're going to have to flank these trees when we go through. Look at that point. It's underneath that last one. That's my problem. Load up again, there'll probably be another one. I know it's something that you have to practice at, and you get better at, and the only way to get better is to do it. Pam's gonna come in on that bird. Good one, Pam. Whoa. Whoa. Ah. Whoa. Is that in front of it? Did you see? I couldn't tell where you were shooting on that one, other than not where not the, bird at the bird was. <laughs> I could tell that. I was very surprised at how they are fast little suckers and hard. I mean, you gotta be quick to get them. But Pam wasn't about to be bested by a little bird, no matter how fast. She bore down and improved as she went. There you go, he's pointing right in front of you. Whoa! Got it. Good shot! I did good, got a couple of birds, I was proud, and um, brushed up on my shotgun skills a little bit. It's comfortable for me right here. Right there? Yeah. Well, that's a good looking fit. You're in the pocket there, and that's where you want to be. Whoa. Stay. I don't know what's out here, but she says something. Good shot. All right, now here's a, here's a pair. This is not like Bob White. You got a lot more color pattern in these males and females. Yeah, look at that beautiful top knot yeah. sticking out. And a little cinnamon brown on the cap and then all these different beautiful patterns. Look at that drab handle. See? It's just the opposite with humans. <laughs> you know, the guys are kind of drab and the women are all dressed up and feathery. She's not sure where they are. She's moving now. They're running. Oh, how come you didn't shoot that one, girl? You take your gun off safety. Oh, yeah, there's that problem. <laughs> I have never been able to hunt over dogs. Um, I was really excited to see how all that worked. Now, did you see a slam on point on that last one? Yeah. Just, just yeah. I've had German long-haired pointers for about 30 years, so I've got a lot of experience with them, and the reason I've had them that long is because they're excellent gun dogs. Any of those continental breeds that they've got over in France and Germany, they train those dogs to hunt everything. Not like us where the labs do the ducks and the setters and the pointers do the quail, uh-uh. Their dogs have to hunt everything. It was uh, very exciting to watch his dog, Moni, do her thing, and she was uh, pointed out the quail and got him up in the air for us, so it was great. Pam, why don't you walk kind of closer to Dell here and I'll just sort of flank okay. it out here on this edge. Look at them all. Right here. 
Got it. Oh, that was sweet. Pam? Yeah? Okay, just wondered where you were. <laughs> I'm a little bit behind you here. Dead bird. Turned out to be a great day. Yeah, I thought with that snow this morning it was really going to be Me worthless. Me too. It opened up nicely and we didn't get rained on and the quail. It was I great. Know, there's a lot of them in here. Mother Nature apologized for her first day's snow by literally blowing it away the second day. Well, what do you think with this nasty wind? Are we going to get up against some trees or what? Well, what we'll try and do, uh, we can't do anything about the wind, obviously, so what we'll try and do is, is push the birds out of the heavy cover into the lighter cover so we can work the dogs on them. All right. Uh, hopefully that'll, that'll work. Obviously, we want to work the dogs into the wind, so. I don't want to work into the wind. <laughs> <laughs> well, let's let the dog round them up and okay. drive them to us. Yeah, well, we'll just have to grin and bear it. Yeah. If it gets yeah. too bad, we'll take a break. Birds everywhere. Whoa. Can you go that way? Good ah! job, girl. All right. <laughs> that was sweet. You're welcome to walk right along that easy stuff, fam. You know. Did you miss that one? I did. Then. So did I. <laughs> Look, like they're going like this. I know, they're the crazy in this wind, them all over. and you can't hear them get up, oh. and then... And they're gray, and they're about that far off the ground, and are there any <laughs> and more cold and... can use? <laughs> okay, next one, in trouble. All right. This conditions right now, these are a little bit unusual for this time of the year. You're going to see some snow, uh, cold wind, so they're generally tougher conditions than we ordinarily find earlier in the season, obviously. Let's see if it's serious. All right, let's hit it again. We'll just let her keep working in here until she narrows them down. Some of those birds are holding awfully tight. There's one. Right there. Tip right up, ma'am. Shake him! Ah! It's happening too fast, I can't get my thoughts together. Well, the first, you make sure that nobody's in your way, way, and then you shoot. Okay, we got them both. Can we find that first one? All right. Good girl. Let me get a picture of her with that one. Good dog. She is really good at finding dead birds. I love that. It's tough today. We've got a big wind screaming off the mountain. We've got a little bit of shelter on these trees, and the birds are loving it. They're just buried in this stuff, and they're running. Birds don't like wind any more than we do. Makes them flighty, makes them goofy. You never know what's going to happen. We've got the dogs working through here, can't control them. They can't hear us, we can't hear them. We're just gonna keep working, try to get these birds pushed out of the thick stuff and into the grass where we've got a crack at them, where we can see what's going on. Almost at the end of the trees, there could be a big bunch of them down here. Otherwise, I've already gone out into that sagebrush. Keep hunting easy now. Oh, easy, easy. Bird in here, bird in here, here. Bird in here. Come! One down. Oh! Now that is what you call a tight holding quail. Second day of the hunt was was great. It was a little different. Um, we, the snow had kind of melted off some, but the wind was horrible. I mean, um, we would throw our shotgun up and it would blow all over the place and for a novice with shotgun that kind of actually gave me a little bit of an excuse but the birds were flying still so the dogs were able to do their thing. It just was a little bit grueling because of the wind but fun nonetheless. Yep. Well, that was a foolish mistake on my part. I took my eye off the first bird and went for the second one. Should have stuck with the first one. That's one of the Biggest mistakes, quail shooter, any covey bird, big mistake. If you start on a bird, stay on that bird. I wonder if I should walk through here. Good shot! 
See if I can find Shy. It's hard to get on him, isn't it? You're not sure if you saw one because you can't hear right? right? Yep. Well, there should be a bunch of them out here, so when they do get up, watch where they land. Okay. Especially if the bunch gets up. Oh, yeah. Beautiful cockbird. Gorgeous. There's your California quail. These guys are native to the west, California obviously. They're also known as the valley quail because they like to live in the agricultural valleys along stream courses, a little bit of riparian brush is what they love. That's why they're hanging in here. Even though this is the desert, they're irrigating these shrubs and trees and that provides the overstory cover these little guys need. Beautiful little covey bird. All right. I need some quicker reflexes. That's absolutely right. Well, it was tough out there today, Ron. Tough, I guess. Green condition. But hey, we did but it was well. worth it. We saw a lot of birds. We saw a lot of birds. Got some real good dog work, and that's what it's all about. The sun finally broke through on Pam and Ron's final day, so Dell led them to rolling hills where Moni usually finds lots of chucker and grape partridge. Would they outshine the valley quail? It's our last day of hunting. <laughs> it was just getting good. The clouds went away, the snow and the rain went away, even the wind went down a little bit. The sun comes out and Dell takes us up into these glorious hills. This is prime chucker and gray partridge country. Okay, fast dog. We'll be fast. The third day we went, we were able to get on some different terrain. It was very hilly and uh, looking for gray partridge. The weather was nice, cold, sunny, but I'll take that any day. A little bit windy, but um, but it was fun. We it just didn't see much. Don't be afraid if you've got a solid pointing dog that'll hold its points, don't be afraid of letting it cover a lot of country. You don't have to keep them in close. The more they run, the less you have to. She can find a bird out there 300, 400 yards, and as long as she holds it, I'm happy. Then I'll walk over there, otherwise we're not covering enough country. That third day, um, Cheyenne worked her tail off, literally. She ran all over the place. She slammed on the point then when she got that scent, and I walked up, and one sleeper bird got out. Not too far, but a little bit challenging. There's one. Nuts. I hung a leg on him. Watch him, he's going down. Keep watching him. Marked it down way out there. We went out for it and we look and we look. So I don't know if it flew over another hill or went around a corner or what, but never found a feather. So that was really disappointing because it was a beautiful little hunt and I was hoping to get one to show Pam. From dismal weather and an abundance of quail to sunny weather and a dearth of partridge. Well, that's bird hunting. Three days isn't nearly enough. I've got to come back and explore this Columbia River country again. I would definitely like to come back to Washington State to hunt. Um, Ron says that we should probably come a little bit earlier. But I'd like to do that. The wa weather would probably be a little better. Whether it's good weather or bad, the birds are always there and the dogs are eager. About all a hunter has to do is show up with guns, plenty of shells, and a positive attitude. Success is measured as much by dog work and scenery as birds in the back. The chance for bringing home the bacon is as good as the effort you invest. Upland bird hunting is a legendary tradition that soothes 21st century nerves with nature's legendary balm, the joy of hunt. So go for the fresh air, the vistas, the thrill of wild birds in flight, and the chance to roam the kind of country the average citizen only dreams of.